five lessons from watching, uh, five positive lessons from watching Vince McMahon's documentary on Netflix. The first one is best reactions or engagements come from relatable storytelling. Two parts. One, um, they introduce a character called Stone Cold Steve Austin, or Steve Austin's his real name, and they just add Stone Cold. He essentially was this kind of like working class, gritty, would swear, would drink beer kind of guy um, that rode like a Harley Davidson motorbikes, wore like jean shorts and so forth. And he was very rebellious and would swear and shout at his boss, which was Vince McMahon. And um, that kind of like rebellious attitude was something that fans aspired to because who doesn't want to shout back at their boss that they don't like, that the boss is demanding things of you. Who doesn't want to beat your boss up? Who doesn't want uh, to smack your boss in the face? Um, so essentially that got the best reactions because it's kind of like something that in real life you can't do, but you get to see it lived out in WWE. Uh, the second part is Vince uh, actually created his own character, which is um, like an, a, a melodramatic or an exaggerated version of himself, which was Mr. McCon, um, or Mr. McMahon, I keep on pronouncing it differently. And again, when he was growing up, he came from a poor family and he always found that rich people or people with money would look down on uh, on them as a family and him. So he channeled all of that kind of like, I'm rich and you're all poor mentality into his character and he got the most heat as it were which is basically booze and negative attention from that uh, so he was very much people loved to hate him because he was this kind of like rich person um that people didn't like <clears throat> and saying he was a billionaire or a millionaire um again it got the the best kind of uh, attention as it were and i think of course these are melodramatic examples of like the wwe uh, or like back in the day wwf but then it's like what's the relevance here now so to some degree it's kind of like questioning your own stories whether or not there are relatable aspects in your own stories i think for me one thing i've noticed is i've recently been like hey i want to be a millionaire so i can impact more people through building a school um and I've realized that sometimes me saying, I just want to be a millionaire isn't necessarily relatable. However, if it's, I want to build a school, that might be more relatable. Or I want to change the education system, that might be more relatable. Or uh, the fact that I initially wanted to be a bin man. So as a kid, my aspiration was to be a bin man. I've since changed from that aspiration um, because I've realized, oh, I've got skills in business and entrepreneurship and it's slowly built over time. But um, where are those relatable relatable size of your story so for me i'm going to try and articulate and introduce and uh and kind of like add in relatable aspects of my story because that gets the the most engagement um and continued kind of like growth of community around that uh, point number two so continuously innovate or you end up dying out so there were other wrestling federations across america doing their own things and um I, I one one time Vince uh, went on holiday and actually he was thinking about work the whole time. So he came back from the holiday and he was like, we should essentially mimic how sport have this one key event. So they have like a, a, a master's tour or they have the Super Bowl. They have always like this big moment. And um, he decided that we as wrestling or the wrestling federation or WWF need something similar. And that's where he came up with WrestleMania. Now, WrestleMania, as it's carried on and continued, has been the biggest event for them um, in their kind of like franchise or in their kind of um, company. And I think um, it, it, it's one of those things that like you always want to find new ways of, uh, of doing the same thing, but bigger and better. So it helped um, their kind of like global reach. Uh, they also obviously innovated with different characters, different storylines and continued to push um, and very much relying on this uh, third point that I want to kind of come on to. But number two really is like questioning, are there areas in your business or product that you've got stagnant and you need to kind of focus again on um, bringing a sense of like new life to what you're doing. And that could be through innovation because uh, otherwise your competition end up getting you. Um, so point three, um, ignore your competition, essentially. Uh, they had 
obviously the other wrestling federations are around as well, uh, the other wrestling groups. And um, at one point, a particular wrestling group were um, performing far better in the TV ratings uh, and so forth for like 30, I think 38 weeks or, so, or something like that for a prolonged time. Um, now in that time, WWF did not give up. They carried carried on innovating and shifted their demographic focus from kids to kind of like young adults. Um, and that's the thing that kind of like man, like managed to bring them back on board. And I think actually it coincided with them introducing uh, Mr. McMahon as a character um, along that as well. Now, after the kind of like 38 weeks of being behind, they then come in front and then I'm not sure again, again exactly about the timeline, but they actually end up being offered to purchase that franchise or, the, or that company um, and kind of like swallow it in. Uh, to WWF so it's like even though a competition might be ahead of you at some point like funnily enough they ended up WWF ended up buying them uh, and and taking that on board so um yeah ignore your competition funnily enough like one day they might come to you and say hey do you want to buy us uh, which I think is super interesting so from like a practical application like who do you need to ignore <laughs> who do you need to block who do you need to unfollow um who do you need to stop checking out their website or or looking at their content? Um, all in the name of focusing energy and effort on innovating with your own product or business or services or service as well. So point four, um, this kind of ties into the innovation part is listen to your audience and be ready to pivot. So I didn't realize that um the rock dwayne johnson actually was introduced um in the wwe kind of like world initially as this like positive like um kind of like happy character um like wrestler uh, and much more of like a good guy and he realized that the fans ended up hating him so that character was called rocky and they were like we hate rocky uh, and they were all chanting we hate rocky and he essentially uh kind of like pivoted to be a bad guy and became the rock and that actually resonated more and the rock then was more liked. So it's not necessarily always a case of like pursuing and pushing forward with one singular idea. Like even I, I didn't realize Hulk Hogan wasn't the first character kind of like label. He had a previous character uh, label and just didn't quite work out. So they pivoted and, and changed it. Um, similar with him, he was this like all American character. And then when he um, actually left WWF and went to the other kind of uh, wrestling federation he he changed to essentially to be a bad guy and that also resonated well so it's always like pivoting um and listening to your audience as you'll see in the documentary they they listen so much that they probably go a little bit too far in, in some of the content being a little bit more sexualized or raunchy um and lots of like gray areas um but generally speaking in some of the nuances it's just recognizing when something does resonate and when something doesn't resonate and adjusting um according to that so again where's the relatable side to this when was the last time you spoke to a client or a or a user or a customer about what you were offering them um and kind of get that feedback from them uh, to adjust your product offering or your service offering and then finally, point five, um, IP has so much power. So intellectual property of the characters, there was so much um, to kind of use with those characters. They could create merchandise off the back of those characters and, and kind of take people on a journey. Uh, similar to like Marvel characters or DC characters, there's lots of power in IP. And funnily enough, when they were kind of um, seeing like UFC start to, to come in its infancy, um, Vince's son suggested that they buy uh, UFC, but Vince was like, there's not enough IP, um, like a, a fighter, if he gets injured or whatever, that's it. Like there's no longevity to the IP um, or the characters that get produced are the fighters um whereas in boxing you can exaggerate the, the characters and elongate the characters and the characters can change over time they can go from good guys to bad guys and so forth and there was much more kind of like um growth and uh, and kind of like ability to reinvent and, and change and be more versatile with like characters like the ip um which i think was really interesting funnily enough they end up merging later on anyway together. So the they kind of like get bought by um, or kind of like come under like a group label for the both of them, the UFC and the WWE. 
And also, I think at one point, uh, UFC was sold for a, a lot of money. So potentially it was a, a, a deal that was missed in its infancy. However, you do recognize the WWE has done so well because of those characters like Stone Cold Steve Austin, like... Um, like the rock you know the the undertaker you have all these like characters which are great which is great ip essentially so yeah um what would be the like the relatable thing here is like really are you building features or are you building uh, a brand um and figure out whether or not you could you know increasing that kind of like intellectual property and the brand value uh, rather than just having a feature because anybody can build features right it's more about the brand and the ip the intellectual property that's associated with that that kind of keeps the fans um coming back for more sometimes so yeah there you go that's five uh positive um positive kind of like takes on um the vince mcmahon documentary you can check it out on netflix now <laughs> We'll